going to take a look at baking ambient occlusion onto the model so I've got this trailer that I'm just playing around with um, working with bevels and things like that just you know experimenting with different things uh, but this will potentially give me uh, something that I can demonstrate what I want to uh, show here um, when you're baking the ambient occlusion if you have objects that are masked by other objects so for example we have this locking pin which is masked by part of the trailer box and also part, partly by the drawbar and then equally the drawbar is masked partly by the uh, box trailer um, in this particular scenario it won't matter because these parts are never going to move from where they are and potentially they would all be joined together later on anyway um, not really sure like I said I'm just kind of doodling with different things and learning new, new, uh, new things within Blender but uh, <clears throat> if I was going to animate something here so perhaps maybe I want to animate the, the pin coming out and the drawbar moving, um, you know, in a direction like so or whatever else. Um, obviously, you know, uh, when I do this, what I don't want is for the pin to be have a dark area where, you know, the ambient occlusion gets baked in really dark because uh, that part of the pin is masked by other parts of, you know, other objects. Um, and what I, so what I'm going to do is actually bake everything as it is. So you can see the outcome and how it's going to bake in that darker area and then we're going to bake it again uh, where those parts won't be dark anymore because we're going to do a different different way of baking it so <clears throat> what i'm going to do then is uh let's bring out another window here we're going to uh, open up a shader editor window open another window and switch over to the shader editor i'm going to add a new material here so we'll just come up to the top here add a new material and I'm going to add this material to all of the objects so I'm just going to select them in the outliner and just add the new material on make sure that you don't change anything in your material that you've got on there for the bake um, so don't adjust any of the metallic roughness or whatever else because that potentially could interfere with the uh, with the uh, bake so if you've got this fully metallic you might find that uh, it will affect the um, ambient occlusion and you'll get like a grey effect on areas that should be white and things like that which could potentially then mess up um, <clears throat> and make areas look darker than they actually are now maybe that's the outcome that you want but uh, if you're going to work with UDIM all of that stuff will be controlled by the UDIM uh, through the shaders so uh, we don't really want to have um, any kind of extra information baked in where we don't need it so create your material, uh, create a new material for each of the objects uh, and uh, um, don't don't make any adjustments to any of the uh, parameters here within the principal BSDF shader. We want to add a new, new texture, so I'm just going to go shift A, texture, image texture. And because I'm, I've got the same material across all of these, uh, when, it, when I add a texture to one, it's going to basically be on all of them because they are sharing the same material, that's fine. So what we want to do then is uh, create our new texture that we're going to bake to. So we're going to go new, call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it AO Bake. That's fine. And then hit enter. And we're going to up this to 2048. So just click and drag. So it selects both of the boxes. And then you can put your values in there. Uh, we're going to keep the alpha. That's not so important when you're doing uh, a bake across all objects. Um, and you don't need to disable certain parts. Uh, but when you're going to do individual bakes then the alpha is a little bit more important and uh, we'll look at that a little bit later on so i'm just going to turn that over to color space non-color because this is an ambient occlusion it's just going to be a grayscale image we don't want any color information in it um, so <clears throat> we'll go control space to go back into uh, regular mode um, or exit out of full screen and you can go into full screen on any of these anytime just wherever the cursor is control space and it will go into full screen you can either then go back to previous view up here or just press control space again that's quite helpful when you've got multiple windows open and you want to see something a little bit clearer so if i'm working with the uv editor here instead of having to close down all the windows and expand this one out or whatever else i can literally select everything over here go into edit mode control space and now i can see my uv map much clearer and make any adjustments or whatever else I need to and control space to go back without having to reopen close and you know whatever else adjust windows uh, really nice feature so anyway 
make sure you have your image texture selected that you're going to be baking to come over to the render settings and then scroll down to bake so it probably will be collapsed like this uh, by default just open it up and then change your bake type from whatever it is to ambient occlusion now if you're going to do node based ambient occlusion that's a little bit different uh, so you would basically in here let me just do that so in here you would just go shift a search ambient occlusion and then plug this one into here and set that up however you need to set that up there's videos on youtube about that um, already not going to get into that i'm just going to do it this way because it's going to be quicker um, <clears throat> but uh, whichever method you're going to use this will work the same uh, but uh, with the node based system you would actually bake to diffuse not ambient occlusion but again there are videos about that on youtube um, so i'm not going to do that i will just use this method because it's much quicker uh, so with everything selected here and i've got my image image node selected i've uh, got my pixel margin at four because there's you know everything's quite close together i don't want any overlap you'll have to adjust the pixel margin um, for whatever uv map you've got set up we've got clear image selected so it's going to basically delete everything there so this image will be deleted and then overridden with all of the information that's going to be baked into it. So we can click bake and away we go. Uh, because I've got multiple objects selected, it's going to do each one in turn. It doesn't do all of them together. It will do the first one, then move on to the next one and so on and so on. So however, however many objects you've got selected, um, it will just do them in turn. It will, like I say, bake the first one. So if you've got, like what I've got here, four objects, it will bake the first one finish then move on to the second one and then finish move on to the third one so it will bake them as a set if you like just one after another um, and then we'll see um, you know the information baked in as each one finishes so if I actually go back into object mode there's our first one and it's already baking the second one so it's already baking the second one here and we can see that information is now appeared here for the mud guards and it's now baking the third object uh, or it might be the i don't know whatever yeah so that's the third object and a little bit more information was baked in and then it's going to do the fourth one and they're completed so now we've got all of the objects baked into our ambient occlusion so we've got you know quite a nice plain ambient occlusion with all the information we need excellent so what we can do then is actually apply that image to our model so if I just do that, we'll move this one over so I can connect it up. All you need to do is just take the color to the color, like so. And because it's set to non-color, it's going to just display the uh, black and white, the grayscale information. And we can switch over to uh, material preview, and we can now see uh, ambient occlusion on the model. So all of that's now been baked in. The information is now being shown on the model. Looks really good. Excellent. So we've got all the information there. And whatever else but if i have like i said before you know um certain parts that will become visible that aren't, aren't uh, already so like for example the lock pin here if i animated this and then had it move up we've now got this dark area uh which we don't really want that's uh, yeah if this was a chrome pin we don't particularly want that dark area on it because it's not going to look right in my opinion so and the same with this if i animated the drawbar when i moved that out it's then going to have all of this dark sort of stuff going on um, inside of there. And also, if I hide this one, we're going to have this effect. And also, again, on the inside of the mud guards. And that might not be the desired result we're looking for. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is bake this again, where we can actually uh, not have this effect show up on the model. So if we go back into regular mode. I'm just going to go Alt-H to bring everything back. So we'll disconnect that one again we'll make sure this one's selected we'll open up our uv uh, editor window again just so we can see what's going on and uh, what we're going to do then is select everything individually and bake them individually uh, so by default what you'll have in your outliner is something like this you'll just have these eyeballs which you can basically turn the visibility of each object in the uh, viewport on and off if you can't see this filters drop down, you might have to expand your outliner. If you've got it like this, you won't be able to see it. 
So you can either drag across with your middle mouse button. So click your middle mouse button and drag across and then select it or preferably, you know, just expand out your outliner. So you just drag the whole thing so you can see it a little bit clearer. Um, and the more icons you add, you would want this to be a little bit bigger anyway because you won't be able to see them <clears throat> very clearly. So with the filters drop down exposed, we can click on that. We want to turn this one on, which is disabling renders. We click on that and then move away from there. And we now have a new icon in our outliner. And what this will allow us to do is actually bake each of these individually um, and deactivate the render for the objects that we don't want to be included in the bake process. So, you know, start from wherever you need to start from. So I'll just go top to bottom. So I select the locking pin and we go into edit mode. It's obviously going to load in my image that I've already baked. Uh, now, from my understanding or what I've experienced, once you've got an image like this, unless you have the clear image selected, it won't let you bake over the top of it again because there's information already there. So it's basically not going to work. Um, but what I like to do, instead of trying to bake over something that's already there, I like to just get rid of this texture. Uh, because I haven't saved it at this time, what I can do is just come in here and hit disregard and it will then go away. So I can hit that, it goes away. If on the other hand you have it where the image is actually saved, um, what will happen is in here it will show single image and the file will be in here, the file name to wherever that image is located and the, the uh, disregard button won't be visible. But all you need to do there in the drop downs, change it from single image to generated and then you'll be good to go and you can then you know start your bake again so if we go back into this one we're going to go down to here make sure everything's set up correctly so ambient occlusion whatever pixel margin you need to set clear image so we can hit bake so this is just going to bake the information for the locking pin first of all um, and this is again where the um, oh. alpha comes into play because we want to delete all the information in the background as you can see at the moment, we've still got this pin which has the dark area on it. And that's because we haven't deactivated any of the other objects here in the outliner for the render. So what we need to do is basically deselect the camera uh, where it says disable in renders. We need to deselect all those. So you can just in this case, because we're going to be doing the bake in the top uh, object in the outliner, with these highlighted, we can click and drag and just deselect all of those in one one click and drag operation um, so what I'll do is I'll disregard that and we'll bake it again and now because these are deactivated in the render when I bake the locking pin this time what we'll do what it will do is it will ignore all of these other objects and we'll have this result so now we don't have that black uh, dark area over the locking pin so if I have a chrome pin and I animate it when I when it like raises it will actually be a chrome pin and not have that black area on it so once we've done the first one here and we've then got our alpha in the background this has now cleared all of the information out the background which allows us to then write in new information if you don't include the alpha in your image that you create it will be filled in with whatever color you selected here so um, then it, it won't bake any new information because there's nowhere for it to put it because it's already been filled in with the black or color information that you selected here. So you need to make sure you include the alpha uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the texture that you create. So what we can do then is uh, disable the render for the lock pin, select our next object and enable the render for that one, and then uncheck the clear image box and hit bake. Uh, so what this will do now is bake in the information for the mud guards, but it will also keep the information intact for the locking pin that won't be overridden because we have the clear image unchecked so that's that one then we do the same for the next one we go to this one um, and again just click bake and it will then bake in the information for the raw bar tow bar whatever you want to call it and hitch and everything like so and then we can move on to the next one so we just disable the render on that one enable the render on that make sure you select the object you're going to be baking so it's highlighted in the um, 3d viewport here so we go to the trailer box and we can just hit bake again and now that information will be baked into the texture and by doing it this way 
you can have overlapping objects but uh, because we've disabled them in the render they will not be included in the bake process at that particular stage so that information won't be written in so you can then avoid getting those darker areas where you don't want them um you know over like lock pins and things like that um that can be really helpful this one's gonna take take a little bit longer because it's obviously the biggest object there and it has a fair few bevels on it so we've now got our information baked in not much looks different there but uh where our lock pin is just here now it's actually got a nice ambient occlusion baked to it it's, it's not um um you know dark or whatever else which is what we want so now what i can do is connect this one up so i can connect this up to here um <clears throat> control space to go into full screen mode now when i get the drag the lock pin up it's actually not going to have that dark area baked in anymore which is what we want and if i hide this we don't have the dark areas on the mud guards and, and on the drawbar so that's really you know just quick video to show uh, how to set all that up when you save your texture out though so if we go back into the uv editor here and we save the image out so we'll load the image in ao bake and then we go image save as here when we save the image out what we can do is um, change it from rgba to rgb and that will then save the image without the alpha you need the alpha there for the individual bake process but when you save the image out we can save it without the alpha so i can go ahead and save that and that's now saved out and uh you know we can move on so what we can do here then is go back into the shader editor and i can play around so now i can add in a um mix rgb node here and then change the uh, color and again because this is um, the same material across all objects whatever i change here is going to affect everything so we can change the color so we can make it you know perhaps maybe blue change it from mix to multiply so it's going to multiply the color and the ambient occlusion together similar to the process you would do in paint.net where they're multiplying things together or photoshop or gimp or whatever and then we can you know play around so now we can increase them metallic and uh, make it really shiny and we end up with something like this result and uh, that's all got the ambient occlusion information baked into there um, through the texture and whatever else so you know that's really how you can do that and uh, now what i can do is again animate this draw the uh, pin up and we won't have that dark area uh, on it which we had before so i just wanted to quickly show uh, the process that i use for baking ambient occlusion across multiple objects that potentially could be overlapping each other um, now like i said before if it's never going to move it's not going to uh, matter but if you have objects that potentially would move under certain scenarios like a uh, a multi-stage ram or something like that uh, in its default rest, rest position uh, each punch is going to be you know overlapping the next one um, and if it never moves it doesn't matter but as soon as you tip the body up and those punches then start to come out each part of the uh, multi-stage ram starts to come out if you've baked it out with the uh, as a whole um, as an entire you know uh, object <clears throat> then you're going to have those darker areas and then it's going to look a bit off because you know uh, a multi-stage ram the actual punch part would be uh, chrome um, or chrome effect or whatever so uh you know hopefully there i've shown you um you know like i say it's my method of baking out the individual objects uh right or wrong um and uh, maybe that might be you know help you out if you're having problems with uh baking the ambient occlusion and getting dark areas in places you don't want them to be and things like that i'm sure thanks very much for watching i'll catch you in the next one